All right, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Joe Piverunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm that covers disruptive tech for a global audience of retail and institutional investors. Today, we're gonna to talk about a company called Heliogen. The title of this presentation says, Why Heliogen Stock is Falling. Now, it's a bit of a clickbait title, but it's certainly telling the truth. So here's a year-to-date chart of how Heliogen stock has performed over the past 36 days. As you can see, it was trading above $12 a share. Now it's trading below $4 a share. So a couple obvious reasons stand out. This is a SPAC. SPACs have been uh, running through a bit of a rough time lately. We've been warning about them for the past four years. The way that a SPAC works is that it rewards the people doing the deal. They want to make sure they get a deal done before the music stops. Then you have the company that gets the funding and they're happy just to raise some cash fairly easily. And then you have the retail investor that gets the short end of the stick and especially has been getting the short end of the stick lately. So that can certainly contribute to the poor performance along with the overall stock market um, performing very poorly, particularly tech stocks. But we're gonna to talk today about why Heliogen is falling aside from the obvious reasons, and that has to do with the fact that the technology that they're trying to run with is subpar. So what Heliogen does is something referred to as concentrated solar power. So this diagram does a good job of showing how it works. It's rather simple. You have a receiver mounted on top of a tower, and you have a bunch of mirrors that reflect the sunlight onto the receiver, uh, heating the things up, and then turning that into steam, and then it turns a turbine, generates electricity. Quite a simple concept, but it certainly can't compete with solar power and it's never been able to get reasonable traction. So here's a rather remarkable picture of Bright Source's project. So they were one of the, I suppose, biggest companies involved in CSP. And this um, rather remarkable picture shows their towers and their installations and all the mirrors shining sunlight at uh, at the tower so that's what concentrated solar power looks like now bright source tried to have an I ipo several times and this are the title of this article uh, rather um paints the, uh, the the proper picture of it so solar investors even as eager as they are to fund renewable energy said no twice to bright the bright source ipo you could see the marquee investor list, Morgan Stanley, DFJ, Chevron, General Electric, Google, and British Petroleum. So Bright Source, last we read, they had sold their technology to a Chinese company. Their 1980s website has an update from 2017, hasn't been updated since. And um, we had read a piece today that somebody was trying to get a hold of them and it goes right to voicemail. If you go to the website, you can check it out for yourself now. When it comes to why the technology hasn't taken off, first of all, it's very costly. So this is a great chart by Lazard that shows the levelized cost of energy. This is with subsidies removed and any penalties removed so that you actually have a true cost of energy. You could see that wind is rather cheap. If you go up the Columbia River Gorge outside of Portland, you can see quite a few large trucks carrying these giant wind turbine blades up the gorge. That's for all the installations that they're putting in place up there. One company behind this is Next Era Energy. And we've certainly done very well with that stock over the years. They've become the largest renewable energy company in the world. So there's a lot of success stories around renewables, just not the um, CSP technology. So that's one problem is that it's not cost effective, but the other is that it's riddled with problems. So this is a report put out by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. 269 pages detailing all the problems. So they collected data on about 80% of the CSP plants operating worldwide. And there was around a thousand problems, about half having to do with the technology. So CSP just has never been able to compete with solar as the cost of solar panels plummets, other renewable energy um, sources become cheaper and CSP just isn't economically viable. Now, another example of a failed uh, company around CSP is this eSolar, and they were started by a gentleman called Bill Gross. They took in $222 million from, again, some marquee investors, Google, General Electric, NRG Energy. 
they were lauded as the second coming of Christ. So Arnold in his day praised the company as being the future of renewable energy, World Economic Forum, and you can read all the other accolades they received. Well, eSolar, you can try to buy the domain, it's on sale. The company all but disappeared. This was an article in 2017 about how the um, power tower develop is developers missing. And a follow on article talks about, this was just a couple of years ago, how a company called Solar Reserve is one of America's last remaining CSP developers. They've all but disappeared. And it also talks about the bright source project in the Mojave Desert that um, doesn't seem to be doing much. So con concentrated solar power has all but failed while solar panels and wind have done a great job of displacing dirty energy. Now, we say that CSP has failed, but it has resurrected itself. And if that name looks familiar, Bill Gross, we can go back here and see that that's the Bill Gross that founded eSolar. Well, he's back again, and this time he's going to, he's already did, merged with a SPAC and took his company public. So that the latest flavor of his efforts is called Heliogen. And Idealab actually happens to be one of the founders or uh, one of the funders of eSolar. So Mr. Gross is gonna have another go at it. He claims that artificial intelligence and some additional technologies are going to make CSP economically viable. So the SPAC that he merged with, they were looking for a disruptive tech company. I'm not sure why they would have thought that CSP is disruptive tech. And furthermore, why they would have thought it has the potential to transform the world's energy production, but they did. And then also a, a point to make here is that um, they talk about being committed to DNI. So we're very quick to call out the DNI charlatans. These are people who like to put a drop down box that you have to select from, and then they put half the world's population and label it Asian. So they're very ignorant and they do nothing but create problems in, in companies. They're divisive and they erode value from shareholders. So we do not support DNI, we believe that it's in fact a red flag. So that's probably a presentation entirely on its own. But with everything about this SPAC and the company it's merging with is nothing that we'd want to be involved with. So Heliogen took in over $128 million. So the first $222 million in CSP didn't work. So now there's another $128 million from Bill Gates. Gentlemen must be easy to get money out of. And then uh, of course, the ArcelorMittal, a leading mining company, they're planning a pilot in California, 40,000 mirrors covering 100 football fields, and then one wonders how they're going to clean those. If they have to use water, that's going to be a problem because California is having droughts. So Heliogen plans to try to make CSP economically viable, and they want to, um, they have a, a MOU signed with a, another mining firm, and they want to get rid of all the dirty energy that's being spent on mining well that's kind of already happening so 70 percent of alcoa's aluminum smelting portfolio currently runs on renewable energy so this isn't something new that heliogen is proposing provided they get the csp technology to actually work solving the renewable energy problem for smelters is something that's already happening and this eco aluminum does come at a premium but people are willing to pay that so the entire value proposition that Heliogen brings to the table, it's from a failed past. It, there's, there's nothing about this technology that, that is appealing. It has a lot of issues. It's failed over and over. Throwing some more artificial intelligence at the problem isn't going to solve anything. And it's certainly in no danger of competing with other clean renewable energy sources that investors ought to be putting their money into. So we've put a date on the um, earlier stock chart that we showed you. And over time, we can refer back to that and see how well this $700 million company is faring. Now we've noticed on Twitter, there's a lot of people pumping this and there seems to be some manipulation happening from the Reddit type. So it wouldn't be surprising to see a lot of volatility. Perhaps the share price goes up and then it goes back down, it goes up and goes down. This is something that that even the most risk hungry investor should pass on and time will tell what happens with this firm because the, the what they're trying to sell isn't worth buying whatsoever. So make sure to sign up for our YouTube channel, click subscribe. We'll be putting out more videos on renewable energy 
topics like space, stocks, and synthetic biology, things like that. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this.